looking for something creative, you're just in time then with this bead design, the Peyote Stitch Diamond. The Peyote Stitch Bead Diamond Charm is the perfect design that's quite unique with its elegant look created with the Peyote Stitch Technique. A bead pattern you'll enjoy that looks great, a simple design that's fast fun and easy to make. So let's get ready for this tutorial. To satisfy your creative needs, feel free to give this video a like and enjoy this episode of Turbo Bees. Here's a list of everything you need to make the Peyote Stitch Bead Diamond Charm. Before starting this project, I'm just letting you know that I'm using Omniflex 15 pound fishing line which I think works best for peyote stitch designs. It's an affordable string that's low in price but high in strength. With that being said, I'm just keeping you informed and letting you know that this is a personal choice. This is not a sponsored video. Making the peyote stitch diamond charm is simple. We'll start out by laying the beads out in a 2-1-2-1 sequence in this order as you can see it here. This will end up being the center of the pattern, also known as a spine, which we'll be able to build around once added to the string. So just lay out those beads, just as you see them here on the screen. Once you have all of those beads lined up, this is what it should look like so far. Now we're ready to add them to the string. So from here, we'll take three feet of string and match up the ends. This will ensure that we have the same length of string to use on both sides. Then, we can pull the beads from left to right and add them to the designated strings, one for the bottom row and one for the top row. Let's go ahead and take the bead furthest to the left at the bottom and add it to the string designated to the bottom. Then, we'll take the bead furthest to the left at the top and add it to the string designated to the top. Feel free to let those beads fall to the bottom of that string. Now, we have the bead furthest to the left that's in the center. We're going to take that bead and we're going to add it to both strings. Just like this, with that bead on both strings, let that bead fall to the bottom. Let's continue adding beads to the string, again taking the bead furthest to the left at the bottom, adding it to the string designated to the bottom, then taking the bead furthest to the left at the top and adding it to the string designated to the top. As I've mentioned before, let those beads fall to the bottom, then taking the bead furthest to the left in the middle and adding it to both strings. As you will see, these steps will be pretty simple. We'll continue adding these beads to the string until we have all of those beads on the string. Remember, you'll take the bead furthest to the left at the bottom and add it to the string designated to the bottom, taking the bead furthest to the left at the top and adding it to the string designated to the top, then taking the bead in the center furthest to the left and adding it to both strings, just like this. As I should mention, be sure to take your time when adding your beads to the string ensuring they've gone to the correct string. Continue watching as I add these final two beads to the string. Now that you have all of those beads on the string, you'll hold both ends of string, pushing those beads toward the bottom or center of that string. Be sure to keep those beads in a tight formation and they'll look exactly as they were when they were laid out in that 2-1-2-1 pattern. Then from here, you'll tie both ends of string together with a square knot to lock all of those beads into place. When tying your string together, be sure that your knot is tied solid and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Now that the string is tied and everything is locked into place, this is what it should look like so far. As you can see, we'll have two ends of string that we'll use to add beads and build around on this main row of beads filling in the open spaces. But first, we'll take one end of string and run it back through the closest bead here on the top row. So watch close as I guide the string through this bead, pulling that string all the way through, and this will set us up for the next steps. With the string coming out of this gold bead, we're now ready to add beads to the string, filling in the open spots. So using that same with the string, we're going to add one gold bead to that string. Once you have that bead on the string, we're going to run that string to the next bead on that row, which will be this white bead here. Watch close as I guide the string to this bead. When you get that string to that bead and pull the string all the way through, that bead that was added will stack right into place, filling in the gap. Now we're ready to add the next bead. Using that same end of string, we're going to add a white bead to the string this time. Now that we have that bead on the string, we're going to run that string to the next bead on that row, which is this white bead here. 
Again, continue watching as I guide the string to the speed, pulling that string all the way through until that bead that was added stacks right into place, filling in the gap. As you can see, with the string coming out of this bead, we're ready to fill in the next open spot. Again, using that same in the string, we're going to add a gold bead to that string. Now that we have that bead on the string, we're going to run that string to the next bead on that row, which is this gold bead here on the end. When you get that string through that bead and pull the string all the way through, that bead that was added will stack right into place. With the string coming out of this end of the pattern, we're ready to go in the other direction, stepping us up to the next row by running the string to this gold bead here. Watch close as I guide the string to this bead, pulling that string all the way through. With the string through this bead, we've now stepped up to the next row and ready to add more beads. Again, using that same end of string, we're going to add a gold bead to that string. When we have that bead on the string, we're going to run that string to the next bead on that row, which is this white bead here. Continue watching as I guide the string to this bead, pulling that string all the way through until that bead that was added stacks right into place, filling in the gap. With the string coming out of this white bead, we're ready to add the next bead. Again, using that same in the string, we're going to add a gold bead to that string. Then, we're going to run that string to the next bead on that row, which is this gold bead here. Continue watching as I guide the string to this bead, pulling that string all the way through until that bead that was added stacks right into place, filling in the gap. With the string coming out on this end of the pattern, we're ready to step up to the next row going in the other direction, so we'll run the string to this gold bead here. Continue watching as I guide the string to this bead, pulling that string all the way through, stepping us up to the next row. As you can see, the string coming out of this gold bead, we're ready to add the next bead to this row. We'll add another gold bead to that string. Then, we're going to run the string to the next bead on that row, which is this gold bead here on the end. Continue watching as I guide the string to this bead, pulling that string all the way through until that bead that was added stacks right into place, filling in the gap. From here, we're going to run the string to the next two gold beads, stepping us down, making the string come out of this end of the pattern. So just watch close as I guide the string to these beads, giving you a clear visual reference on what beads to run the string through. As I should mention, be sure to take your time when running the string to these beads, ensuring the string doesn't get caught or hung up on any other beads, keeping that string hidden within those beads as well. Now that we have the string coming out of this end of the pattern, we'll keep it there for later use. So from here, we'll take the other end of string and run it back through the closest bead here on the bottom row. When you get that string through that bead, be sure to pull it all the way through and this will set us up to build on the lower half of this pattern. Using that same end of string, we're going to add a gold bead to that string. Now that we have that bead on the string, we'll run that string to the next bead on that row, which is this white bead here. Watching close as I guide the string to that bead, pulling that string all the way through until that bead that was added stacks right into place, filling in the gap. As you will see, this is exactly as we've done before. We'll add another white bead to that string. Then, we can run that string to the next bead on that row, which will be this white bead here. Continue watching as I guide the string to this bead, pulling that string all the way through until the bead that was added stacks right into place, filling in the gap. At this point, things should feel pretty familiar. We'll add another gold bead to that string. Then, we're going to run that string to the next bead on that row, which is this gold bead here on the end. Watch close as I guide the string to this bead, pulling that string all the way through until the bead that was added stacks right in place. With the string coming out of this end of the pattern, we're ready to step down to the next row by taking the string and running it to that gold bead that was just added. When you get that string through that bead and pull it all the way through, we're all set to build on this row. So from here, we can use that same end of string and add a gold bead to that string. Once we have that bead on the string, you can run that string to the next bead on that row, which is this white bead here. Getting that string through that bead, pulling that string all the way through, and the bead that was added will stack right into place, filling in the gap. As you can see, we have another spot to fill on this row. We'll add another gold bead to that string, then we'll run that string to the next gold bead on that row. Getting that string through that bead, and pulling the string all the way through, until that bead that was added stacks right into place, filling in that gap. With the string coming out of this end of the pattern, we're ready to step down to the next row. It's just like we've done before. We use that same in the string and run it back through this gold bead here, getting that string through that bead and pulling the string all the way through, stepping us down to the next row, ready to add the next bead. 
Of course, using that same in the string, we're going to add a gold bead to that string. Now, we can run that string through the next bead on that row, which is this gold bead here, get that string through that bead, and pull that string all the way through. The bead that was added will stack right into place, filling in that gap. Alright, so from here, we're going to run the string through the next two gold beads, stepping us up to make the string come out of this end of the pattern, meeting up with the other end of string. So just continue watching as I guide the string through these beads. As I've mentioned before, this should be a pretty clear visual reference on which beads to run the string through. Just be sure to pull that string all the way through, keeping the remaining string hidden within those beads. Now that you have both ends of string coming out of this end of the pattern, you can tie both ends of string together with a square knot to lock everything into place. Again, be sure when tying your string together that your knots are tied solid and secure to ensure that everything stays together and locked into place. Once your knots are tied and your beads are locked into place, you can carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. So as you can see, we finished the main part of this diamond, but now we'll need to add the points on each side, which should be pretty simple, so check this out. So what you'll need is about 8 inches of string. I've used the remaining string that was previously cut off the ends, which should be just enough. Now you'll need to match up both ends of string. Then you'll run each end of string through two gold beads here on the end. So just watch close as I guide the string through these beads. As you can see here, that's one end of string through a bead. Once you get both ends of strings through these beads, continue holding both ends of string, pulling that string all the way through. As we continue holding both ends of strings, we'll add one gold bead to those strings. So once you have that bead on the string, you'll push that bead toward the pattern with the other beads just like this. Now we'll take one end of the string and run it back through a bead here on the end going back inside the pattern. Watch close as I guide the string to this bead. Be sure to pull that string all the way through. Then you'll take that other end of string and run it through this bead here going back inside the pattern. Watch close as I guide the string to this bead, again pulling that string all the way through. Be sure to pull both into the string to reduce any slack in the string keeping that bead in a tight formation. Then you'll need to tie both ends of string together with a square knot to lock that bead into place. Be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure, ensuring that everything stays together and locks into place. With that string tied and bead locked into place, carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. As you can see, we've created a point for this diamond, which was pretty simple. So what we'll need now is to create another point on the other end of this pattern. What you'll see will be the same steps and is just as simple. Once again, what you'll need is about 8 inches of string, then you'll match up the ends. Next, you'll run each end of string through a different bead here on this end. Watch close as I guide the string through these beads. As I've mentioned before, that's each string going through a different gold bead here on the end. Once you get both ends of string through those beads, continue holding both ends of string, pulling that string all the way through. With both ends of string still matched up, we'll add a gold bead to both strings. Again, once you have that bead on the string, you'll push that bead toward the main pattern with the other beads. Then you can take one end of the string and run it back through the bead here on the end, going back inside the pattern. Continue watching as I guide the string through this bead. As I've mentioned before, be sure to pull the string all the way through to eliminate any additional slack in the string. Now we can take the other end of string and run it back through the bead here on this end, going back inside the pattern. Watch close as I guide the string through this bead, pulling that string all the way through. Remember to pull both ends of those strings, keeping that bead in a tight formation. Then from here, you'll tie both ends of string together with a square knot to lock that bead into place. As I always say, be sure to tie that string nice and secure, ensuring that everything stays together. Then carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string, and your peyote stitch diamond is now complete. And there you have it. Another peyote stitch bead design that looks fine that was pretty simple to make. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and you can create one just as great. If there's anything you would like to add, requests or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you are new or you just haven't already, don't forget that you can always subscribe if you want to be notified for more bead tutorials just like this one. Hoping you'll tune in for the next one to satisfy your creative needs. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching TurboBeads.